Hello everyone and thanks for watching today's video and welcome to my second season of my videos. In the first season you might remember we spoke about the digestive system, how different parts of our digestive system work, what do they do in our body and what happens when disease affects different parts of our digestive system. So if you're interested in watching about the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine and the colon etc, please do watch those videos. Um, in this season, I'm going to talk about one of the main organs that is present in our digestive system called the pancreas. Now, pancreas is one of the vital organs in our body. And what is a vital organ? Vital organ is an organ like the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, the liver, also the pancreas, without which life is not possible. So if somebody removes the pancreas surgically or pancreas goes into complete shutdown or it fails, then life is not possible for very long. We will eventually die. So that is a very important organ in our body. Just to go further before we go into what pancreas does, today I'm going to talk about the anatomy of the pancreas and what it does in our body. In the next few videos, we talk about the diseases that commonly affects the pancreas and can happen in our body. So just to going forwards to know what a pancreas is, pancreas is a gland in our body. Now, what is a gland? Let's talk about the gland first. So let's talk about glands first. When we talk about glands, most people think about the gland that come up in our neck when we get a sore throat or in our children when they get a rash or something or viral infection. They are called lymph glands and they protect our body against infections, etc. However, going forwards, we're not going to talk about these at the moment. We'll talk about these in a different system when we go to the immune system in our body. We're going to talk about these. But for the purpose of the pancreas, we're going to focus only on these two words, which is called endocrine glands or exocrine glands. Now I'll try and explain the difference between the two. So we are talking about now the difference between exocrine glands and endocrine glands. As you can see, I've divided the name into exocrine and endocrine. The important word to understand is exo and endo. Exo means outside, endo means inside. So a gland and the main structure of the gland, you can see in both of them, are these cells all around, little cells which produce a substance. The substance is produced in very small amounts. However, the substance is very important to our body. If that substance is produced in a way that through a little tube, it comes out of our body. Example I give you is sweat. So when we run around or when we sweat a lot, the sweat comes out of our body onto our skin. Second example, when we cry, tears come out. And tears come out through a little tube, through our eyes onto our skin. When we eat, saliva comes out. It comes out of little tubes from the salivary glands into our mouth, which is outside surface of our body. So those are called exocrine glands, which secrete substances, but they release outside our body. The second type of gland, the endocrine glands, they function a bit differently. They again secrete substances from these cells, and these cells are present in both types of gland, the very, very important cells. But what they do, they do not, do not have a tube to put the substances out of the gland. Instead, they are very close to blood vessels. So, for example, this is a blood vessel and whatever they produce goes into a blood vessel and is called a hormone. And they, through the blood, it's taken to different parts of our body and does different functions. Example of this endocrine gland is thyroid gland, you must have heard about it, which is based in the neck, pituitary gland, which is in our brain, adrenal gland, which is sitting on top of our kidneys. But there are two organs in our body, liver and the pancreas, which do both functions. They do both exocrine function and they do endocrine functions. So they are both exocrine glands and endocrine glands. Now let's focus on the pancreas and see what it does, what its function is as an endo, 
as an endocrine gland and as an exocrine gland. So I've drawn a diagram here to try and explain where the pancreas is in our body. So that's the outline of our body. So that's the chest, that's the rib cage, bottom of the rib cage, the blue line here. And that's the outside of our body. So that's the tummy and that is the chest. That is the esophagus or the gullet or our food pipe. The red thing like a bag here is the stomach. And stomach ends over here and joins the first part of our small intestine called the duodenum, which is like a C. Now, to um, look into further into the details of the anatomy, please watch my previous video on the digestive system. It will clarify it for you. This green structure I've drawn inside, it looks like a leaf. You can see quite long structure. It's almost six to eight inches long. So it's quite long, you know, it's just this long. And uh, it starts, it lies in the sea of the pancreas. And it has three parts. One is the head, one is the body, and one is the tail. You can see head looks like a head. It's a bulky thing. Body is a more slender, longer thing, and tail becomes much narrower and longer. And this black structure here is the spleen, and the tail sits snugged inside the spleen. Now, what does the pancreas feel like? Pancreas is a very soft organ, so if you grab it and if you squeeze it, it will break into two. It's a very soft organ. So to protect the pancreas, what nature has done, instead of putting it right in the front of the tummy, because any bump on the tummy, any kick on the tummy, any punch on the tummy or any little accident can break the pancreas and obviously which is a very serious condition and can be life threatening. So what nature has done to protect the pancreas, put it right at the back of our tummy. So it's sitting right against the spine. So spine will be just behind it. The stomach is sitting in front of the pancreas and there are lots of other intestine and a large intestine sitting in front of the pancreas to protect it from any accidents or any kicks or punches on the tummy. So that is where the pancreas is, right in the back against the spine. Now you can see in the middle of the pancreas, I've drawn a little tube. This tube opens into this part of the duodenum, which is the, this is the first part of the duodenum, second part of the duodenum. It opens into the second part of the duodenum. And this little tube is called the pancreatic duct. There are lots of blood vessels coming into the pancreas as well. So when pancreas secretes enzymes, some of them, some of those enzymes called pancreatic juice goes into this duct and goes outside our body. Although I say outside, it's still inside the digestive system, but it is not going to be used inside our body, but it is being dumped out into the digestive system. And that is called pancreatic juice. And it contains different enzymes and what is its function its main function is to break down our food into smaller particles it also produces bicarbonate and bicarbonate what it does it neutralizes the acid as we know stomach produces acid it neutralizes the acid when the food comes into the small intestine into this part of the small intestine because bicarbonate is opposite of acid it neutralizes the acid so those are the exocrine function of the pancreas. So secretion that are secreted by the pancreas into the duct, into the pancreatic duct, which releases the substances into the small intestine to help digest our food or break our food into smaller pieces is called exocrine function of the pancreas. Now there are two further things which are produced by the pancreas, but they are not put through the pancreatic duct into our small intestine, but it is pumped into the bloodstream, like we discussed in my, in my previous slide of endocrine function. So it's secretion which are pumped directly into the blood vessels, and that is the endocrine function of the pancreas. So let's talk about this briefly. So let's talk about what are the endocrine functions of the pancreas and what are the exocrine functions of the pancreas. Remember endocrine functions, again, 
substances which are produced by the pancreas directly into the bloodstream and they go to different parts of our body and helps utilize different things. So in the case of pancreas, the two main substances are insulin and glucagon. Both of these substances helps regulate the blood sugar. So insulin will reduce the blood sugar, glucagon will do the totally opposite, increase the blood sugar. And we will talk about this further when we talk about diabetes in one of my future videos. The second function of the pancreas is exocrine function. As I spoke in my previous diagram, a duct in the middle of the pancreas, some of the juices go directly into the duct and they go into our digestive system where they help us break down bigger food particles into smaller food particles. Now that pancreatic juice mainly contains three or four things. One is bicarbonate, which I spoke about earlier, which neutralizes the acid from our stomach. Very important. If we don't have bicarbonate, the, in the presence of the acid, other enzymes will not work properly. Yeah. Now the other substances produced by the pancreas include protease, which again go into the duct, into the small intestine, and helps us break down the proteins. That's why they call proteases. There are a couple of them called trypsin, chymotrypsin. Names are not so important. It's what's important, what they do in our body. Amylase, which breaks down our carbs, our carbohydrates, starch, sugar, etc. Lipase, which breaks down our lipids, which is the fats that we eat. And by the time pancreatic juice is finished with our food, it's instead of big chunks of food that we have eaten, it will be very small little particles almost molecules which will be very easy to absorb by our body our digestive system into the bloodstream so it can go different parts of our body to be utilized so that is the main function and structure of the pancreas i hope you found it easy to follow i tried make it as easy as i could if you have any questions if you're still confused about certain functions or structure of the pancreas please write in the comment section and i'll be happy to answer your questions Please like and subscribe and in the next few videos I'm going to talk about different diseases of the pancreas. Thanks for watching again.